Hey folks, my name's Nate and I'm the Otter Outdoorsman. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some tips that I have for you with how to set up and enjoy your hammock in the woods. This video is mostly for beginners, but there should be some stuff for everyone to learn, even if you've already set up a hammock in the woods before and been doing this a while. So, one of the things that I have is loop straps. Loop straps are something that some people like some people don't like. Personally, I find these invaluable. Um, and I won't set up a hammock without them. Um, I could do it with a rope, but I love using the, having a strap with loops. I'll show you what I mean. Um, one of the reasons why is purely, and is purely efficiency. Having a strap where I can choose, where I can adjust it just by unplugging the carabiner and putting it onto a new strap makes my life a lot easier. Having a strap with multiple segments on it over a long distance makes it so much easier. And then on the end, or if it continues all the way to the end, on the end having a loop on it means I don't have to pre-tie a bowline or I don't have to worry about having a bowline on the end of a rope and I can just easily wrap it around the tree, and snag it on, and having it with these loops means I'm doing less damage to the tree. So, do, having straps like these, you can either make them your own with rope, which isn't that big of a deal. There's plenty of videos out there with how to do it. It just means a little bit of work. Or you can buy them, and there's plenty of cheap ones out there for you. Um, having an investment like these makes setting up a hammock 10 times faster and adjusting it just as quick. You don't have to fiddle with rope. You don't have to fiddle with knots. Everything is right here. And having two of these with at least having 200 pounds of adjustable weight on it on both sides, it's perfect for you. The next tip is choose, a, choose two trees that are about 15 to 20 feet apart. You can go as short as 10 feet if you have a smaller hammock, but I generally like giving myself a little extra space. The reason being is the straps, and giving yourself a little bit of clearance, and especially if you're using a if you're using a tarp. A real important step is check both of those trees. Make sure they're alive. Um, what I like to do is if I have a metal instrument on me, something like a walking stick, an axe, a knife, something give it a couple thumps. The reason I like doing that is because hitting it, giving a couple thumps is if I hit it and I get this clunk and it echoes up the tree, most likely that tree is dead. And you don't want a punky tree when you're setting up your hammock. Watch any funny hammock setup montage and you'll see hundreds or a bunch of videos of people with hammocks and being in hammocks with the trees just collapsing in on themselves. That's because they didn't check those trees to make sure if they were alive or dead. So again, 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 feet apart, make sure those two are alive. The other way, I always look up, I look for leaves. It's in the winter, it's a little bit harder to tell. Um, I tend to look for live branches kind of also do a little bit of a break test on some of the branches. Kind of hard to tell during the winter if you're doing winter hammocking. During the summer, a bit easier to tell. Spring and uh, fall, look at the look for buds and look at the leaves. But during the summer, a lot easier to tell. Unless there are gypsy moths in your area. That's another story. So once you've picked your tree, I tend to like to go about a hand's width or about one to two hands width higher than my head to strap up 
the hammock straps. Personal preference, but I find that gives me the best height on the hammock, uh, at least at the 15 to 20 foot uh, distance. Again, personal preference, but to get it up there, what I like to do is I will strap it down at about head height, and then I'll show you what I do. So I get it strapped up over here. So I get you strapped, so I get it strapped here. And then what I do is before I tighten it, I lift it up because trying to, because trying to tighten it at that height, trying to strap it up and tighten it at that height, really difficult to do um, and will just lead to a headache. So just bring it up, tighten it. It's not gonna get to be perfectly tight, but get it to the point where it at least locks into place and then you can do it on the other tree and try and get them at least at even heights. Um, but that's the way I do it and that's about the height that I like doing it at. Another little thing you can do, um, just a quick side note, invest in extension straps. Um, if you end up running into big trees and they're all you can get into, um, super useful. Uh, all they really are is just a uh, extra bit with no extra loops other than two loops on either side awesome bit of uh, kit to carry on you when you're going on hiking. Uh, if anything, you can use them to hang up your gear, but perfect when you run into large trees or if you can't find any that aren't uh, super far apart. Another bit of side note with that. So a good tip that I have and one of my favorite ones that I figured out, uh, other people probably do this too, but I kind of figured this out on my own as I was uh, trying out while I was working with hammocks is how to unpack and repack your hammock without it ever touching the ground. What I used to do is I used to throw it, unpack it, throw it over my shoulder, clip it onto one strap and then clip it onto the other. What I now do is I actually put one carabiner in to the hammock uh, bag and I pack it in as I go, leaving it clipped to the other strap and continue packing it in until I get to the other one and then leave the other carabiner at the top. So then when I get to the site that I want to, I take out the carabiner that's at the top, clip it, walk with it all the way to the bag, and then when it gets to the bag portion, I can kind of feed it out and clip it onto the other strap. I'll show you how that, I'll show you how that unpacks and also kind of how I repack that. So as I said, one carabiner comes out, everything still out in the bag. And I kind of judge where the loop is. And you have to pre-pack this if you want to take it out in the woods, uh, if you got this from a store like this, if they didn't already do this. And all you need to do, so the other half's still in the pouch. I can just take it out, grab the other half, comes out. Hook it in. And the hammock never touched the ground. And in reverse, all I need to do is unhook it, grab this, put some tension on it, bag's right here, I take the carabiner, I put the carabiner in it first, and I follow the rest of the hammock in with it, so that, so you can kind of feed it in. And then as I walk towards it, nothing's touching the ground. And this works with, um, this works with, uh, what is it? The uh, hammocks with bug nets too. I actually, I love using it with those as well. 
and everything is packed right in there. Takes a little bit of play, takes a little bit of practice. But as I said, put the carabiner, one carabiner, one side in first, then shove the other one in, and then, as I said, just unpacks. Unpacks pretty quickly too. Makes your life 10 times easier and more efficient, and you're spending less time setting up, and more time enjoying your outdoors your outdoor experience. You just fluff it out, good to go. One of the other tips is give yourself a test set. Uh, what I like to do is grab the edge with two hands, sit down. Um, I look at both of the straps. I didn't get myself a lot of play with these two trees. Uh, these were the two best trees I could find for both uh, shooting and filming. But I have plenty of clearance, so with the test sit, it gives you an opportunity to look at the straps um, and look to see how much clearance you have when you're laying, when you're sitting down. It also gives you an opportunity, if you take your feet off the ground a little bit, it gives you an opportunity to look at both of the trees, um, see if your straps are slipping at all. I tend to try and uh, factor in that so I try and use a branch or something to help anchor it um, and if you need to get any loops. I have plenty of clearance and not rubbing up against any plants which is perfect you don't want to rub up against any plants because that can ruin the hammock. Um, unfortunately blueberries aren't in season because I'm literally adjacent to a few blueberry plants that are about to be ripe <laughs> <laughs> they're green blueberries uh, at the moment <laughs> so I'm kind of sad about that because in those case I could literally just relax here and pick blueberries um, from the hammock which would literally be a dream but fortunately that's not the case so I have actually a perfect sit so I, I could just sit back um, I may have I have to it bunched up a little bit so I have to just adjust a little bit and I can relax so I have one last tip for you this one is very important, so I need everyone to listen carefully um, and listen close. Remember a beverage. Very important. If anything, from this entire tips video, remember to bring a beverage. Now, let's review. Loops make every make unpacking more fit well uh, strapping up efficient. Ten to fifteen foot across trees. You can get away with ten feet, but you're gonna be cutting it close. As I'm doing right now. Make sure they're alive. If you pack your hammock right, it will if you pack it right. It'll unfold perfectly and efficiently. Give it a test sit just to make sure. Have a lovely beverage. Anyways, my name's Nate. I'm the Outer Outdoorsman. You guys get outside. Have some fun. Bring a hammock if you have one. Have a good day. Why don't I sit here and enjoy my beverage? And wish that these blueberries were ripe. Right, damn you. Mm.